In this video, we are going to take a look at the 19 different reasons why anyone is crazy enough to go into investment banking. And being one of them, I can definitely say that some of these reasons are going to surprise you and some will definitely shock you. Because these aren't going to be reasons why you see on television or why you read on books. These are going to be real reasons why people go into investment banking and the benefits that you can get when you work in investment banking. Now before we begin, I just want to take a quick second to remind you to check out our investment banking interview and recruitment guide, which is the easiest and simplest way to break into investment banking. We go over all of the interview and application answers that you need, as well as teach you how to build financial modules step by step under the guidance of an experienced investment banker. And if you prefer to read up on the 19 reasons why anyone would go into investment banking, then check out our website where we have a full length article breaking down each of these reasons. Okay, so now let's get started. And for reason number one, now this might shock you, but it's not the salary and it's not the bonus. In fact, it's the exit opportunity. The number one reason why you should go into investment banking isn't for investment banking itself, but it's what you can do after you leave investment banking. After you've accumulated enough experience in investment banking, what can you do with that after you leave? And I'll let you in on a little secret. Investment banking pays peanuts compared to private equity or hedge fund or other buy side roles. But you need that investment banking experience in order to get into private equity and some hedge funds. So the number one reason why junior investment bankers go into investment banking isn't to stay in investment banking, isn't to have a long lasting career in investment banking, but it's to make the jump into private equity, which is far more lucrative than investment banking. So now let's move on to reason number two. And it's as you would expect, the pay, the salary. And the reality is investment bankers are some of the highest paid employees in the field of finance. And that's because they work on large scale transactions as well as getting bonuses every six months. But the reality is it's not that great. When you look at the salary and then you divide it by the number of hours that they're working, it doesn't turn out to be that great. The only good thing is because you're working insane hours, you're not going to have time to actually spend your paycheck. And that's how investment bankers manage to save up a lot of money because they just don't have the time to spend it. Now let's move on to reason number three, which is being able to pay off your student loans pretty quickly. Now, for those of you that had to borrow money via student loans or just regular loans to finance your higher education, then paying back those loans are going to be an issue. But they won't be an issue if you are on a high salary and getting bonuses every six months. In fact, you'll be able to pay off your student loans in a fraction of the time that it will take others to be able to pay them off. And now let's move on to reason number four, which is investment banking provides one of the best education in the field of business. You will pretty much learn more in one year working in investment banking than you would have learning 10 years at the best business school. And that's because, again, depending on the area of investment banking you're in, you will get to interact with the senior management team at some of the world's largest corporations. You will interact with the new cutting edge startups that are redefining an industry. You will get to be in meetings, in phone conversations that are shaping the next generation, the next industry, the next marketplace. Every single day, you're going to learn something new about the business world, whether it's from a client, it's from a project you're working on. You will never stop learning about business working in investment banking. So if you do enjoy learning about business, the business world, the finance world, then investment banking is definitely for you. Now let's move on to the fifth reason why you should go into investment banking. And that is investment banking can be your oyster into any field of finance and investment. And again, this is what happens after you leave investment banking. And the reality is most junior bankers, they don't actually stick out and stay within investment banking for the next 30, 40 years. They tend to leave after two to three years. And personally, if you were to ask me what is life like after investment banking, it's just freedom. Freedom because you no longer have to put up with the insane schedule of being an investment banker, but freedom because you can also write your own ticket into any career path you want in the field of finance and investment. So personally, after I left investment banking, I tried accounting, audit, risk, compliance, tax, treasury, management, consulting. And I was able to get into all of those fields easily because I had that experience in investment banking. Not because I was this super genius, I'm not, but because I've had that grueling training of being an investment banker, 
that skill that I've developed was universally applicable to any field of finance. Okay, so now let's move on to the sixth reason. And that is every single day is different. And you've probably heard this for almost any role out there that every day my job is different, every day we do something new. But personally speaking, having been in investment banking and in other field of finance, investment bankers take this to a whole different level. One day you could be going through legal documents, the next day you could be chasing your managing director in an airport with an updated presentation, the day after you could be doing nothing. It really is different every single day. So you're not going to get stuck in this routine of doing end of month reporting like uh, in accounting, or you're not going to get stuck doing the same task over and over and over again. So now let's move on to number seven, which is the work that you do does matter. Contrary to popular belief, but the role of an investment banker is pretty crucial to an economy. If we just take a look at the debt capital market, for example, Western governments and pretty much every government are pretty much famous for running huge deficits. They're always having to borrow money in order to maintain their current spending levels. So in order for a government to build new roads, build new schools, build new hospitals, build new infrastructure, which is essential to the day-to-day -day running of the economy, and again, they don't have any money because they're not actually collecting enough via taxes, so they have to borrow the rest. So they have to go to an investment bank or they have to go to other parties in order to actually borrow the rest to actually make up for the shortfall. So investment bankers help regional and local governments get the funding that they need in order to maintain their operation, in order to maintain the current stability and the smooth running of uh, a government. Now, I know what you're thinking. Investment banks don't do this for free. Of course they don't, they charge a fee. And sometimes you do get bad actors. For example, the famous scandal of uh, when Goldman Sachs bankers took advantage of the Malaysian sovereign wealth fund. And that's true that those things do happen, but they're isolated cases. They don't happen every single day. That's just one aspect of it. Other aspects of investment banking is the restructuring department. Say for example, you have a company that has overborrowed and they're on the verge of bankruptcy. Either they close up shop and fire 12,000 people or they go to an investment bank and restructure their balance sheet. And instead of firing 12,000 people, they only need to fire 3,000 people. So when you're in restructuring, it's all about saving a company. It's all about making the best of a work situation. And it does matter. The fact that you're able to save 12,000 people from losing their job, it does matter. Reason number eight, and that is making lifelong friends and possibly even finding your spouse. The reality is when you start working in investment banking, your schedule, your lifestyle is going to change because you're now working in a very demanding industry and you are pretty much working a lot of hours. And your old friends who are not in that industry or who are not in a similar type of demanding career field, they're not going to understand that and after a while, after cancelling on them so many times, you are going to drift apart. But don't worry, you are going to make new friends in investment banking and people who are in a similar career stream as you. Also, as a result of working side by side with people for a prolonged period of time, you are going to develop friendships or even become even closer. Go into any investment banking office space and you'll hear tons of stories of how couples met as a result of working long hours side by side. And now let's move on to reason number nine, which is one of my least favorite. And that is building a tremendous amount of discipline in order to get the work done and not to fall asleep. It's a skill that you will develop working in investment banking. Whether it's a skill that you want to develop or not, that's completely up to you, but you will get that skill. So now let's move on to reason number 10, which is investment banking is a career and not a job. The difference between a job and a career is pretty starking. A job is a nine to five type of gig. You don't really have any upward mobility, you're not guaranteed job security, and you're easily replaceable. Now, some people prefer that, others want more of a stability, want more job security, which is a career. A career, on the other hand, like investment banking, is tough, especially the early years. But the moment you are in a career, you're on a corporate ladder. So if you start out as being an analyst, then you're expected to eventually become an associate, then a vice president, then an MD. So you are on a corporate ladder and you are expected to eventually progress up that ladder. 
So as a result, you get job security, but there's a cost to that job security, and that is a lot of hours in the beginning. But that's pretty much common for any career, whether you want a career in medicine, in law, in banking, junior staff in any career path tend to work a lot of hours. So now let's move on to reason number 11, which is deal making. What separates investment banking from pretty much any other area of finance is the fact that investment banking, it's all about deal making. It's all about connecting someone who wants to buy a business to someone that wants to sell their business. Someone with capital, someone who needs capital. Investment banking is deal making. You're working on deals. Every single day, you're pretty much working on deals. That's your bread and butter. But other areas of finance or high finance, whether it's wealth management, you depend on the market. The market dictates your profit and loss. Now, although the market has an indirect impact on investment banking appetite, investment banking is purely about relationship building, maintaining your connection, maintaining your network, getting people together and structuring a deal. And that's a challenge. And some people enjoy that type of challenge. They enjoy the deal making process. And if that's something that you really enjoy, then investment banking is definitely for you. So reason number 12, building financial models. There are some people who are very techy and they like building financial models. They like to play with numbers. They like to play with Excel. Well, if that's you, I have good news and bad news. The good news is you will be playing with Excel a lot. You will be moving numbers around. You will be building financial models, one after the other, grinding away and building financial models till the end of the night. And honestly, till the next morning. But the bad news is that you don't have the freedom to build the kind of financial models which you want. Now, although in our financial modeling course, I will show you exactly step-by-step step on how to build a full-fledged financial model, which is exactly what you will be doing in investment banking, but in investment banking, you are under strict guidance of your client. Your client is going to give you specific information and it's going to be your job to portray your client in the best light possible and to fight it to get your client the best deal and the best valuation. So you don't have full freedom in order to build the kind of financial models which you want. And if you want that kind of freedom, then you have to go over the buy side. So in private equity, for example, that's when you can pretty much go crazy and build a super ridiculously complicated financial model and pretty much add every single bell and whistle you want, make it a hundred Excel slides, however you want to build it. But you don't have that kind of freedom in investment banking. So now let's move on to reason number 13, which is getting a skill in financial modeling. As a result of working crazy hours, building financial modules on Excel, one after the other, till the next morning, you are going to get good at building financial modules. You're going to get accustomed to different types of capital structures. You're going to get used to dealing within a specific industry and you're going to know the norms of that, of that industry. And again, you're going to get really good, really quick, really efficient at building financial modules on Excel, which is great because you can use that skill and leverage that skill in order to move into a specific area in private equity or hedge fund or wherever you want to go or wherever that skill is worth something and they will pay you for that skill. So now let's move on to reason number 14, which is being surrounded by extremely motivated and talented individuals. The very first thing you're going to realize when you start in investment banking is that you're going to be surrounded by extremely motivated, intelligent and savvy individuals. Pretty much everyone that gets through the grueling investment banking recruitment process are high achievers. It's the one thing they all have in common. They might not all have the same education background, experience background, but everyone is a high achiever. You're no longer going to be the smartest person in the room. If anything, it's pretty humbling and it's also going to push you to do the best work possible. Now, even though you're all in competition with one another, there is still this strong sense of camaraderie. So whenever you are in need of assistance or whenever you're out of the office but you need someone to send an email on your behalf because you've overslept, like it will happen to pretty much everyone, you can always call upon your friend that you trust that will, that will pretty much send the email for you. So let's move on to reason number 15, which is credibility in the startup world. This is something that I've just recently realized after speaking to a friend that works in the VC world. And that is whenever you have an investment banker within a team or by themselves, whenever they're trying to pitch to try and raise capital for a startup, 
Then investment banker, as a result of working within the investment banking world, building financial models, knowing exactly what investors look for, what criteria, what metrics, what kind of numbers that they look for in order to judge whether it's a good investment or not. Because they have that knowledge, we can pretty much use that in order to communicate with VCs and raise capital. And it's much easier for an investment banker to raise capital because they know exactly how to market themselves as a result of building countless marketing materials and knowing exactly the type of metrics and criteria investors look for whenever they're trying to judge a startup, whenever they're trying to value a startup or a potential investment opportunity. So if you fancy starting your own business after investment banking, then you will definitely build the skills and the knowledge that you need in order to build a pitch deck which you can present to a VC fund and they will definitely receive it a lot better. So now let's talk about reason number 16 and this is something that I completely did not expect. Back in 2014, I had an intern working under me and originally on day one, he was extremely introverted, really quiet, really shy, didn't say a single word. And after a while, he became a lot more confident, he became a lot more assertive. And I'm not sure if it's as a result of investment banking or for something else, but I've spoken to a few candidates and a few of my seniors and they, and they have said that they've observed the exact same thing. And maybe it's because when you work in investment banking, you're pretty much stretched to your limits. You're, you realize that you are capable of doing things that you never thought you would have been able to. You never thought that you'll be able to work 24 hours straight, but investment banking, it will push you to do that. You never thought that you'll be able to get a lot of work done in such a short amount of time. But in investment banking, you will learn how to do that. Investment banking will literally push you to your limits and it will make you someone that's a lot more efficient and a lot more effective. And that might be a reason why you become more confident in yourself. And as a result, after three months, he just wouldn't shut up anymore. Now on day one, didn't say a single word, after three months, would not stop talking, just would not shut up. It was the most strangest thing I've ever seen, but it's not, but it's not the only story like that. There have been a few like that. So. Investment banking can give you confidence in yourself, maybe. I'm not 100% sure on this one, but it, I have seen it one or two times. On the theme of being more confident, let's talk about reason number 17, which is learning how to work with difficult people. In investment banking, you are going to meet a range of people and you're going to have to work uh, beside them. Whether it's working beside a finance rock star or working beside a skeptical private equity associate that just wants to discredit your work. You're going to have to learn how to work with every single one of them. And you're going to develop communication skills, you're going to learn how to stand up for yourself. It's something that's naturally going to come to you because you're going to be forced and pushed into that position. So those are key skills which are pretty much useful at, in any situation and you're definitely going to learn those key skills in investment banking. And now let's move on to reason number 18, which is developing rock solid work ethic. When you're working in investment banking, you're pretty much working on multi-million dollar transactions, billion dollar transactions even. So every little detail counts. The smallest error on your work can cast doubt on your ability to do the work, on your deal team, and it will pretty much reflect badly on the bank's reputation. So every little detail counts. You have to produce error-free work. And that is a lot harder than you might think because again, we're all humans. We're all susceptible to making mistakes. And this is why there is a lot of uh, controls in order to make sure there are zero errors. When the analyst uh, does the work, it's then checked by the associate. After it's checked by the associate, it's then rechecked by the VP. And after that, it's then sent to the MD for final approval or sent directly to the client. So there are a lot of controls just to make sure that there are zero errors on the work. That's how important producing error-free work is in investment banking. But that level of pressure, that level of stress is always going to be there and it's going to hover over you. So whenever you are working on Excel, working on a PowerPoint presentation, you're always going to be mindful to always double check your work, triple check your work. And that level of work ethic is going to be something that you're going to develop working in investment banking. And it's something which is going to be very, very useful. So now let's talk about the final reason, which is number 19, and that is networking. When you join investment banking, you're not just going to be a generalist. You're going to join a specific industry and product group. 
So for example, when I joined investment banking, I was in the mergers and acquisitions team. But specifically, I was in the TMT group. So within mergers and acquisition, all of our deal flow or the area which we specialized in was in technology, media and telecom. All of our clients were tech related and all of our deal flow were tech related. So as a result, we would develop a good relationship with a lot of the private equity firm which had a lot of appetite for technology firms and we would develop a lot of relationships with companies that would acquire smaller tech companies and as a result of that networking that constant relationship building we can pretty much monetize that relationship either by leaving investment banking to become a consultant to those clients to those private equity firms, to those companies, or you can pretty much start your own investment bank and servicing a handful of companies which you know have a huge appetite for M&A. Or you can pretty much jump ship and join the companies who you were once selling companies to and now you can pretty much jump ship and go to them and be their advisor and be on the buy side. So that was my 19 reasons as to why you should go into investment banking. Again, these are real reasons why I think people should go into investment banking. There are lots of websites, lots of blog posts out there detailing lists as to why you should go into investment banking, but they're pretty much the exact same thing, just reworded, and it's not really something which I would consider to be real. Real reasons are pretty much the exit opportunity and pretty much the experience that you'll get working in investment banking. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in our next video where I will talk about the nine different reasons as to why you should completely stay away from investment banking. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like and I'll see you in our next video.